afternoon to you all. I welcome you once again to our virtual teaching for today. And today we are going to look at the Gettysburg Constitution of 1925. We have already looked at the 1916 Constitution, um, which was promulgated by Governor Clifford. And today we want to take a look at the 1925 Constitution. But bear in mind that um, this topic um, is, is based on the previous one. And so if you want to know what exactly happened or what were some of the features of the 1916 Clifford Constitution, I urge you to um, watch the video on the 1916 Constitution. And I think that uh, you will get all the information. However, we may be making some references as we as in we'll be comparing the two of our constitutions and see what has been the changes in, 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 in both the executive and the legislative, the legislative assembly. So good. So let's begin with our discussion for today. Now, let's take a look at our lesson objectives. So our lesson objective for today is, you know, like simply one, you should be able to discuss the features of the Gettysburg Constitution of 1925. When you are asked to discuss some of the features, you should be able to do that at the end of this le uh, lesson. Then also outline the strength or merits of the 1925 uh, Constitution of Gettysburg. So what was good about the Constitution? What was the strength? And what do you find not good about the Constitution? And the last one we will look at, or we are supposed to look at, is the limitations of the constitution or the weaknesses of the constitution what do we still find not good about the constitution and that is what basically we are supposed to look at in this lesson so let's begin with our introduction so as we have already learned in clifford constitution we realize that the clifford constitution fell short of the aspirations of the aborigines right protection society that is the ARPS and the National Congress of British West Africa, that is the NCBWA. Uh, why did this uh, fell short of the aspirations of the educated elite? Because it failed to introduce the elective uh, principle of representation that had been uh, advocated for by the uh, educated elite all this while. And so we are saying that that, of course, you know, brought about some sum of limitations, even though there were other forms of limitations, but this was the most important to the educated elite, and most importantly also the excluding, and sometimes, you know, uh, their issue with the chiefs and all of that. So the, ARB, the ARPS and the NCB, NCBWA were actually, uh, um, I mean, nationalist uh, groups, if I may say, that were formed by the educated elite to oppose some of these uh, um, what do you call it, terms or, or, or conditions in the constitution. So let's look also on taking up the governorship in 1999 when of course Gattisbeck took over in 1919 he decided to initiate some changes all right, in the political development uh, of the country in a bit to somehow reduce the agitation of the national because the nationalists had been campaigning and had been demanding had been writing in news asking for uh, some reforms to be made uh, to be made in the 1916 constitution and therefore this was in the right direction so governor Gatisbeck you know tried to, to 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 make some changes some reforms to the constitution so that it could reflect the aspirations of the of the educated elite but let's look at if uh, those changes made by governor Gatchesberg really uh, did satisfy the educated elite so in view of that in consulting with the aborigines rights protection society and again some of the chiefs uh, Gatchesberg then decided to 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 promulgate a new constitution which we are going to look at the feature so let's quickly take a look at the features of the Gadgetbeck Constitution as we move on. So we'll begin first of all with the with the features 
and then in the futures we begin with the of course legislative council so as we saw in the 1916 uh, clifford constitution we saw that the legislative council were actually um 21 in the uh, clifford constitution let's find out here so the, in 1925 the constitution gave the right of elective representation elective representation and it provided for 15 officials and 14 unofficial members so when you add the 15 to the 14 you are supposed to get 29 right yes 29 so which then means that in the 1916 in the 1925 constitution actually it provided for 29 members both official and unofficial as opposed to the 21 member uh, 21 members official and unofficial in the 1916 constitution which was quite an improvement on the 1916 constitution however again the constitution gave the right of elective principle elective representation which is the which means that citizens could now vote and elect their leaders as opposed to the appointment that were made uh, in those days so let's look at the next one the unofficial members as we have said uh, were 14 were actually made up of five europeans and out of these five three were nominated by the governor and again two also represented mining and the other commercial interests then the remaining nine were actually uh, africans uh, who were nominated to the unofficial members so we have five here yeah? five out of the five three four the europeans so we have five we have five here yeah? we have five here yeah? and out of that five we have three of them of course representing uh, the governor i mean nominated by the governor then we have two that were also into the mining uh, and other commercial interests then the other nine so five plus nine will give you what 20, uh, 14 and therefore that made up the unofficial council let's look at the other one now out of the nine africans that we say were part of the unofficial 14 we are saying that out of that nine three of that nine were elected on property franchise to represent the three municipalities and these three municipalities were Accra, Kumasi and again second D and these were the the, the, the three most important towns at that time within the Gold Coast and then the six of course remaining or six remaining were elected by the newly created Provincial Council of Chiefs to improve the native administration in the western, eastern and then the, what, the central sorry of course province so you realize that Gadisbeck was so much into the indirect rule system to the extent that in his constitution in 1925 what he did was that he actually created a council of chiefs a provincial council of chiefs to really you know uh, to really fulfill or to really uh, you know make the indirect rule really work in the gold coast and so you realize that the remaining six were actually chiefs who were also elected so we we we, we will have six as against three um, educated elite over here. Good. Now, Asante in the Northern Territories and the British mandated Togoland had no representation uh, on, 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 on this constitution and, 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 and mainly because these areas were governed uh, separately with a set of laws that were also made by the governor himself and this has always been a problem in almost all the constitutions that we have looked at now let's then take a look at some of the i mean uh, uh, a representation uh, a representation just to make everything easier so we had 29 we have already said that already then out of this 29 15 were official members and these official members were actually appointed by the europeans all right and then we had 14 unofficial members so out of that 14 unofficial members we had five who were europeans and then again we also had 
nine that were also african and we've said that out of that five europeans three sorry two of them represented what the mining and other commercial was interest of the economy and all these were european then again we had three again nominated by the i mean sorry elected uh, to represent the three municipalities Accra, Cape Coast and of course second D. Then out of the nine Africans we said that six of them will come from the PCC that's the Provincial Council of Chiefs and then the other three uh, will also represent Accra, Cape Coast and the second D. Right so what can we really say about this um, constitution or this whole constitution so it is clear that in this constitution uh, the Europeans are still in their majority as opposed to the Africans when you look at this you realize that the Europeans out of this of course 15 all these are Europeans uh, out of the 14 unofficial members in the Legislative Council we only had nine who were actually Africans all right and out of that nine we had six and then three Apart from the Europeans being the majority, again, we see here that because of the introduction of indirect rule, you see that more chiefs, that is six, were appointed as opposed to three uh, by of the educated world elite. And so this also emphasized the fact that Kajesberg was really interested in the indirect rule. And again, he was prepared to to make sure that the indirect rule system worked in the country. So now let's take and look at the composition of the executive council. The composition of the executive council. But before we look at the composition of the executive council, let's come back and see again the composition of the legislative council of the um, the Gettysburg Constitution. I want to compare that to that of the 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 the, the 1916 constitution so you, we see that in the 1916 constitution only three uh, the chiefs were appointed and then three were educated elite in the unofficial members only three but here we see an improvement of three being added to the chiefs or the seats of the chiefs and then we still have maintained what three educated elite that actually uh, were representing these areas but the only difference between the 1916 and then and then the 1925 constitution was the fact that in the 1916 all the chiefs the three and the three educated elite were all appointed by the governor unlike um here in 1925 that the six chiefs will be elected, however, and also the three, um, um, you know, educated elite were also going to be arrested. So uh, were also going to be elected. So this was somehow the difference between the 1916 constitution and that of the 1925 uh, constitution. However, also the 1925 constitution also had 15 official members, whereas in the 19 um, 16 the Clifford Constitution had only 12 official members so there has been or there has been a gradual increase in the number of members that represented the executive council so now let's go and look at the executive council sorry the legislative council so let's go and look at the executive council rather now in the executive council we realize also that the executive council continue to uh, be in the in the in, 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 in all Europeans. It still continue to be in the hands of Europeans. So, so it continue to preserve what the Europeans, as it was still composed of the governor and five British officials of the most important what of, of the most important department. And so we realized that the executive council did not change the membership in the executive council. In the Clifford Constitution of 1916, did not change as opposed. I mean, it did not change as it is the same thing in the 1925 Constitution by Governor Gordon Cochesbeck. And still, again, the Executive Council lacked what African membership. 
African membership and that still is a problem for the educated elite and for us and of course the council was responsible for the day-to-day -day administration of the what of the gold coast or the common gold. so now let's look at the advantages so looking at this whole composition the executive the the legislative council we have also compared um, the features uh, with regards to the composition of the executive and the legislative council to that of the the clifford constitution of 1916 what do we find different even though we have already talked about some of them let's be specific about some of them so can you uh, come out with some of them before you, you you go and read or before we go on good i presume you are you are you are done with that now we realize that in the 19 um uh, 20, uh, 1925 constitution the Gattisburg constitution it increased the membership of the legislative council from 20 to what to 30 30 in the sense that the governor was part of that 30 you realize that it was supposed to be 29 that is 14 and what and 15 but the governor shared the governor was part of what of the legislative council he was the chairman and so making it what making it 30 what members good let's again look at the another good thing about it so we are saying that it's good because the number of the members had increased okay the, mom, the, the number of the members in the executive council had what increased from 20 to 30 and that was a good thing good so now let's look at the the 19 of course uh, uh, the second objectives or the second advantage or merit of the 19 of the graduate constitution is that it granted the people uh, of the gold coast an elective principle for the first time and this is something that the educated elite had been advocate, i mean advocating for all these work elective principle the right to vote when we say elective principle we are talking about the right to what the right to vote and this has been something that the educated elite had been advocating for all these work and so uh, now of course Gatchisbeck has has granted that demand which is a good thing which is a good thing for the good coast and so they were to represent Accra Cape Coast and also second D then we look at again the third one we are saying that it also established what the provincial council of chiefs the 1925 constitution again established the provincial council of chiefs to ensure the correct application of what the indirect rule in the gold coast because that is what the, the British governor had always wanted to do to apply what the indirect rule system and we are saying that with Gadgetsbeck appointing or I mean creating a provincial council of chiefs and, and even giving them six membership as compared to the 1916 Clifford constitution whereby there were only three was also uh, a good thing about the 1925 um, constitution and let's see if we have any good we don't have any so only three and I guess you would be able to you know uh, get more good now let's look at the weaknesses and this is where the problem is the weaknesses of the constitution every constitution would always have a uh, hair of course weakness even though we have praised the 1925 constitution the constitution that it has allowed some sort of elective principle people to vote which is good it has also increased the number of membership of the legislative council from 20 to what to 30 which is also quite you know good but there were also some um, disadvantages or weakness or limitations of the constitution and these weaknesses as we are seeing one obviously the executive council continued to be exclusively official uh, in membership without involving the native unofficial representation so in short there wasn't any african still again on the highest uh, organ of government and uh, there wasn't any african representation or any gold coaster representation on the 
um, council. Again, both Ashanti and the Northern Territories, again, were included in the in the Legislative Council. So you realize that Ashanti and the Northern Territories, once again, are not represented in the Legislative as Assembly, which means they have no what, representation in the Assembly, which also we find to be quite undemocratic. Again, the elective principle was also based on property franchise, also was quite undemocratic. So even the elective principle that was introduced by Governor Frederick Gatting Gatinsberg uh, did not actually, it was not uh, a universal suffrage. It, was, it, it wasn't something that everybody could go and vote, but rather it was limited to people who had property. It was only when you had properties that you 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 were actually you know allowed to uh, allowed to vote. Again, the constitution also fell short of the expectations of the educated elite uh, due to the large representation given to the chiefs. And for instance, a man known as uh, J. E. Castle Hayford, um, of course, argued that that by their education, that by their education they and not the illiterate chiefs should be I mean recognized as, as the true representative of the person and of course this uh, statement you know sparked quite an interesting debate in my class the last time I was uh, having this discussion with them that by their education they but not the illiterate chiefs should be of course recognized as the true representative of the person because when you realize when you look critically at the 1925 constitution you saw that six seats were given to the chiefs as opposed to what three educated elite which means the chiefs would have more say than the educated elite again in the 1916 constitution of Clifford only three were given so the two parties, the educated elite and the uh, chiefs were given equal uh, representation, but it seems Gajisberg had a different um, thing altogether and he decided to give the chiefs a sex increase it by 100% and still maintain that of the, the, the educated elite, which the educated elites were actually not happy about. And so yes, uh, with this, I think we will bring this discussion to an end. But this, I mean, debate will not end. Do you think that it is the educated elite who who who, who actually qualifies to lead the people, or to you, you think that it is the chiefs who are traditionally supposed to lead the people? So, who do you think, uh, I mean, is suitable to lead the good coast? or to represent the Gold Coast or to represent the people in the Gold Coast. Is it the chief? Or you think probably it is the educated elite. But mind you, he said illiterate chiefs. Some of the chiefs were educated. Not 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 all of them were not educated. Even though some of them were not educated, but not all of them were not, you know, educated. So yeah. I think the conversation will still go on. And on. So with this, we will bring the discussion to an end. Uh, you try your hands on these, of course, questions. And if you have any, any question, any contribution, anything to share, just call me on 054-20-83-047. 054-20-83-047. Subscribe and have a nice... Uh, Bye-bye.